This is part of the program where we confer our honorary degree, and I'd like to invite Dr. Greg Fowler to join me and Dr. Kimberly bogle Jubinville to assist me in the hooding. And I'd like to invite our honorary degree recipient, Dr. Vince Patton, to the front of the stage. Today we, today we confer an honorary degree on Dr. Vince Patton. Dr. Patton served as the eighth Master Chief Petty Officer of the Coast Guard from May 1998 until November 2002, making more than 30 years of active service. His illustrious career included staff and operational assignments, both afloat and ashore throughout the United States, along with a joint military service assignment in Cuba and Haiti. Among his numerous military awards includes a Distinguished Service Medal, which is the nation's highest military peacetime recognition for performance of duty. Dr. Patton is actively involved with a number of other public service and nonprofit organizations, serving on boards with the National Coast Guard Museum, U.S. Naval Sea Cadet Corps, Northeast Maritime Institute, and the Uniformed Services Benefit Association. Dr. Vince Patton, thank you for your service to our country. It is my great pleasure to award you with the degree of Doctorate of Public Service. and I, as we were coming here, uh, I, I liken my visit here to sort of like, if you've seen the TV show, The Jeffersons, moving on up. So I, I think that's exactly what, what's happening here. So Dr. LeBlanc, thank you so much for the invitation, for having me here, uh, to the faculty, staff, uh, board of trustees, and of course to the class of 2018. This is your day. And I want to say Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there, especially to you graduating mothers and the mothers of graduates. This is indeed a special day for you. As iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. I start my speech here with one of my favorite biblical verses, taken from the book of Proverbs, chapter 27, verse 17. It's a passage that has remained something of a main ingredient to my personal core values of people, passion, and performance. These personal core values of mine were internalized during my climb to personal, professional, and academic successes in my life. It became filled with an idea in mind that I couldn't get to where I wanted to be by myself. It was important for me to learn the value and take full advantage of mentoring. With today, May 13th being Mother's Day, it's most appropriate for me to think about the number one mentor in my life, my mother. Just as the case with many of you, our mothers perform the most important roles in our lives by guiding us on the path for success through, our, through their sage wisdom, their sharing of worldly experiences, and reminding us to always do the right thing. Case in point here being, brings me to my childhood memory where my mother literally saved my life from tragic harm. True story. You see, I'm from a large family of 10 children, six boys, four girls. I'm the fifth child, third boy. My oldest brother, Greg, has always been and still is to this day the person who I have admired the most and consider him as one of the principal mentors in my life who helped shape my focus toward successful achievements. Anyway, the eight-year age difference between my brother Greg and I didn't seem to be much of a problem, as he always took time for me to help explain whatever I was asking. He knew I admired him so much, so it had added a personal obligation for him to generally stop whatever he was doing and help me out. Let me take you back to August 1962. I was almost eight years old at the time, and my brother Greg was 16. He had gone off the Boy Scout summer camp for a couple of weeks. When he came home, I was, of course, happy to see him and eager to hear about his summer camp experience. As he began to unpack from his trip, 
I was so anxious to get my hands on some of his camping equipment to go play with. Well, as he was slowly pulling out all of his camping gear, I noticed a piece of clothing that I had never seen before. It was a weird looking kind of underwear that I never had seen. It, it had a crotch, but didn't have any backside to it. it kind of looked like this. So I asked my brother Greg, what's that? He snatched it out of my hand and he said, leave that alone. That's an athletic supporter. <laughs> or as some of you may know, as a jockstrap. I had no idea what he meant by that explanation. So I, the curious young eight-year-old that I was, I responded, well, what is it for? What does it do? Seemingly a little irritated now, Greg snaps, it's for protection. Leave it alone and don't touch it. Hmm, I thought. Usually, my brother was always a bit more cheerful in answering my questions. But this time, it looked like I was annoying him. So after getting that big, stern brother look from him, I dashed from his room with some bewilderment as to why he was acting that way. An hour or so later, I creeped back into my brother's room, quietly and secretly borrowed the athletic support and took off somewhere where I could really closely examine it. After stuffing the athletic support in my pocket, I ran over to my friend Marty's house, who lived a couple of doors from me. Marty and I sat there and examined the athletic supporter, trying to figure out what it was all about. And how do you wear this thing? We did summon another friend, Daryl, who just happened to be walking by and asked if he knew anything what this was about. He, too, had no idea. Finally, after several minutes of trying to figure this thing out, and keep in mind this was 1962, and we didn't have the internet to, to Google for the answer. So it finally dawned on me what this athletic supported thing was all about. One of the most popular television shows on during that era, where my buddies and I watched with true amazement and belief, was The Adventures of Superman. Yes, we really believed that Superman was real and was indeed faster than a speeding bullet and more powerful than a locomotive. That he could leap tall buildings at a single bound and would blend in with the rest of the worldly population in disguise as Clark Kent, the mild-mannered reporter from a great metropolitan newspaper. After a couple of us tried to figure out how to wear this athletic supporter thing, I got the idea that you put your arms through the strap and you kind of put it on like this. And then you're like, all you need is a cape. And you're like Superman. So that's what my brother Greg was doing in Boy Scout summer camp. He was learning how to become Superman. After all, Greg did say this is for protection. My friend Marty and I had started rummaging through the house to, to try to find some long piece of silk material that and he found something that his grandmother was using to make a dress. He says, well, she won't mind. We'll borrow it. So it was pretty much shaped like a cape. So we put the cape on back there in the back. And we were ready to be Superman. It looked great. There was even a little wind blowing, so the cape fluttered like Superman. My friends and I were ready to put the Superman gadget to the test. I started running down the street so I could take off and fly. I get halfway down the street, do a leap, and nothing happened. I tried it again, nothing happened. But my friends came over and they gave me an assessment. They told me, they said that, well, you did jump a little bit higher than you normally do, so this thing has something, it does have some kind of work. So we tried to figure this thing out. We kept looking at it. And then finally it hit me what Greg said. This is for protection. That's what is used for Superman to protect himself. So we decided to try the protection angle on this athletic supporter. The railroad tracks were a bit too far for us to go so I could stop a locomotive. And it meant crossing this busy four-lane 
Grand Boulevard, which uh, was a couple blocks away, and we kids couldn't go over that far. So the next best thing was to try to do something daring on our street. So Marty came up with a brilliant idea. Stand in the middle of our residential street and stop a car, just like Superman. <laughs> brilliant plan, I said, because we didn't have to go beyond our restricted block to try our tests. My friends and I were convinced that this will work. So here I was. I have this athletic supporter, strapped on, cape behind my back. I go out in the middle of Cameron Street, the street I live on. Stretch out my arm, this car coming. And I knew that, this, that I would stop this car. And just as the car got close, this voice that sounded kind of mad yelled, fool, get out of the street. You're going to kill yourself. It was my mother. <laughs> yes, that warm August afternoon in 1972, my mother saved my life. Just think, if she wasn't there that day, I wouldn't be here telling you this crazy story. But what does the story have to do with on this, such an auspicious occasion. Well, let me get back to my opening speech, quoting Proverbs 27, 17. As iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. We are all here as a result of our teachings and mentoring from many. Today's special moment to celebrate your academic success will be shared by family members, friends, colleagues, and acquaintances. Soon, what you will be handed to you will show you your physical results of your intellectual hard work. You have mastered the phase of inquisition and now show to all who shall see present that you are ready to sharpen the knowledge and experience of others. Just as in my childhood of exploring what was the unknown, as you began your academic degree program, you too experienced a period of uncertainty as to what really to expect. Through the collaborative efforts of your fellow classmates, faculty, and others, you persevere in elevating your knowledge of uncertainty to confidence and competence in your chosen field of study. You've traveled long and often challenging roads to achieve this level of success in which you have the rightfully earned and will be awarded today. You owe yourself a pat on the back. Always keep in mind that as a graduate, the learning experience never ends. Continue to ask questions and probe further for your knowledge base so you can refine the understanding of your lifelong learning. As I close, I leave you with one of my most cherished favorite quotes that summarizes what I am conveying to you this afternoon. The quote is from actress Marla, Marla Gibbs who said, I truly believe that everything that we do for everyone that we meet is put in our path for a purpose. There are no accidents. We are all teachers. If we're willing to pay attention to the lessons we learn, trust our positive instincts, and not be afraid to take risks or wait for some miracle to come knocking at our door. Bask in the glory today. All of the accolades and congratulations that you graduates will receive are well-deserved and well-earned. While I'm on this platform, I personally look out to all of you and congratulate each of you on a job well done. Congratulations to you all, and also to you moms. Thank you for helping to make that happen. God bless you.